أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي The topic for today is the topic of Rida and the meaning of Rida is contentment. So just to give you sort of a definition of Rida and put it in the context of response to affliction, for example. When someone is afflicted with something, so a hardship comes your way, uh, some sort of pain or suffering, any kind of uh, calamity, there are three ways in which you can respond. And each of those three ways says something not just about you, but about the, the purpose of the affliction itself. So a lot of people ask the question, uh, how do I know if I am being tested or if I am being punished? Uh, people ask, how do I know if this, this, this thing that came to me is a blessing or a punishment? And the answer to that question is, the only way you know is by your response to it. In wh Where does it take you? That's how you answer this question. So when you're afflicted uh, with calamity, for example, with suffering, uh, or something that, that, you don't, that you don't want, there's three ways to respond. The first way is to respond with, with um, resentment, or anger or agitation, uh, a, a lack of, of patience. This is when you, this is the response where uh, you kind of, uh, you feel, you feel a sense of anger towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's the attitude of a uh, why me or how could this happen to me? Why are you doing this to me? It's, it's, a, it's, an, it's an attitude of a lack of patience and it's, it's anger and resentment at the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now that is the response that we definitely don't want to have. And the reason why, uh, actually this response itself is indicative of the, the possibility that the affliction itself was a punishment. Because of the way, when you respond in that way, it, it, it indicates that, that perhaps that affliction was a punishment. Now the second way to respond is with sabr. And we have covered sabr in, in a previous halakha. We've, we've already covered the chapter on sabr. But sabr means patience or perseverance or constancy. Now in the category of sabr, when you respond with sabr, sabr means that, see, sabr doesn't necessarily mean that it doesn't hurt. Sabr doesn't necessarily mean that inside of you, you're not feeling, you know, like just like, you're, so you may be screaming internally. But sabr or tasabr, meaning that your your first level of sabr or bef or the precursor of sabr, is tasabr, which means that you are striving to have sabr. You're striving to be patient. It's like you're struggling against that internal screaming, that internal turmoil. But you still have it. But you're struggling. You're it's the it's the struggle to control yourself. You know, even though inside it feels like like you know, maybe inside you feel, uh, you know, impatient, but what you're doing is you're trying externally to control that. That's the sabr. And the Prophet ﷺ told us that whoever engages in this tasabbur, in this striving and struggle to be patient, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them the gift, the gift of sabr. And notice that I, I say gift because sabr itself, the ability to have patience, to actually have sabr is actually a gift from Allah. It isn't something that's intrinsic in the human being. So sometimes we say that, oh, that person is a patient person. But really, you know, patience or sabr isn't something, it's not like genetic. Um, you know, it's not something, it's not something in the, you know, in the food I eat. It's not something intrinsic to me, but it's something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gifts some people with. He blesses some people with the gift of sabr. So sometimes someone will be afflicted with something very, very difficult, and yet you find them calm. 
you find them able to withstand the affliction. And that is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent the affliction, but along with the affliction, He has sent the sabr. He has sent the, the provision to deal with that affliction. And, and so uh, the way in which we, we get, we basically, um, you know, we, we strive to get that gift is by striving to be patient. So we struggle for it, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives it to those who struggle to have it. And that level of response to affliction means that the calamity itself or the, the trial itself was a purification. Because we know from the, from the, from the Prophet sallallahu that he says that in a hadith that any affliction that a person goes through, any pain or suffering, uh, it removes the sins like leaves falling from a tree. And that's even the prick of a thorn. So even pain as small, and he said any kind of suffering or pain or sadness, anything that afflicts a, a, a Muslim, a believer, in fact, um, that it can be an expiation of their sins, that it removes sins. But the only time in which it's having that effect is if you're patient, if you have sabr. So when you respond to the affliction with sabr, then it's indicative of the fact that this affliction is actually purifying you. So you see how we're answering in stages, we're answering the question of how do I know if this is an affliction, if, if sorry, if this affliction is a punishment or a blessing. And the way I know is in, 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 in my response. So in this case, if I have patience, I have sabr, then it means that it is, it's, it's, it's purifying me, it's taking away my sins. Now there's a third level, and this is the highest level of response to affliction. And that is rida with rida, contentment. So we talked about in the last stage, which was sabr. Sabr means that, you know, first the sabr, the, the first level is that you're striving to be patient, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you patience. Now patience, sabr meant that although I don't like what is happening, I'm still patient and I'm, and I'm holding myself from complaining about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now let me just say that's different than complaining to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When I complain, and now, now I'm just, I'm still, I'm, I'm backing up to sabr again to give you the difference between sabr and rida. That sabr, you know, even there are certain things that contradict sabr and certain things that don't. One common misconception is that if you're crying, say that you lost someone dear to you and you're crying. You know, tears are coming from your eyes. Some people might think that this necessarily contradicts sabr, but that's not true. How do I know that's not true? Because the prophets, peace be upon them, cried when they lost people. The prophet Muhammad وسلم, cried when he lost people. And when he was crying, the companions, they looked at him, one of the companions, and said, what is this? Because he was uh, surprised to see the Prophet ﷺ crying. And he said, this is mercy which Allah has lodged in the hearts of the believers. So he connected the, the tears coming from his eyes to mercy. So it isn't true that just because you're crying that that contradicts sabr. Similarly, what about the, the father of Yusuf ﷺ? He cried so much that he went blind, right? But was it, did that mean that he didn't have sabr? No, of course, right? So, if, so the idea here is that it isn't crying itself that, that contradicts sabr. Con what would contradict sabr is if I'm crying out of anger towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or complaint against Allah or resentment. Now, when I talked about complaining to Allah versus complaining about Allah, what's the difference? Complaining about Allah is the one that we said was the first response and the one we want to avoid. That contradicts sabr. Complaining about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is when you say, look what God did to me, how could God do this to me, you know, and you, and you show anger and resentment. This is complaining about Allah. That's different than complaining to Allah. Complaining to Allah means that when you're feeling pain, you go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with your pain. Yeah, so you're like, um, this is now completely different than complaining about it to Allah. Allah, how could you do this to me? Is very different than, oh Allah, help me. And the second category, the one complaining to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is something that we are encouraged, something we should do. And it's something that, in fact, also the prophets did. Peace be upon them. We know that, for example, after Ta'if, 
Do you guys know there's a, the famous dua of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, after Ta'if and he begins by I complain to you. Right? He's complaining to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about what he was feeling and what he had gone through. And if you look at also the dua of Ayyub alayhi salam, now you know Ayyub is known as the, the most patient, right? He, because he went through so much affliction and he was, that's what he's called, right? If someone wants to talk about sabr, they talk about sabr Ayyub. That his patience was beautiful patience. And in the same way, actually, going back to the issue of, um, of patience not contradicting tears is what was it what was it that um, Yusuf's father salam, had he talked about sabrun jamil when he found out that his son had been thrown in the well or he was gone he thought he was or he was told that he was dead his response was sabrun jamil so he had beautiful sabr but at the same time he cried too right so you can see in these stories that it doesn't contradict and and ayub alayhi salam what was his response eventually after so many years of his affliction was anni masani adru wa anta arhamur rahimin his dua was he turned to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he said that indeed hardship has afflicted me or has befallen me and you are the most merciful of the merciful so again, he turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his hardship, you know, with his pain and his suffering. He said, this is what's happening to me. Like, it's hard for him, obviously. And he's calling on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his mercy and turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asking for, you know, he's, he's, he's beseeching Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his mercy. Again, these are, all, these are all these responses. None of them have to do with complaining or being impatient or, or being resentful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you understand how it doesn't mean when someone, if someone comes and tells you, you know, because you're sad, because you just lost, you know, something happened and you're sad about it and they tell you, oh, have patience. Well, being sad in and of itself or, or crying in and of itself doesn't mean that you don't have patience. Okay? P having, like, having not having patience it's a state of it's an internal state so you could be there could be two people sitting and they look exactly the same on the outside both are crying but one of them is in a state of sabr and one isn't because the state of because sabr is a state of the heart it's just, it's an internal state so you could be one person is crying and they are completely um can they are completely you know they're, they're not they're not in any way complaining about what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them, but they're sad. The other one is crying, and internally they are complaining, they are resentful, they are angry at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or at what has happened, even though externally they look the same. And even the Prophet sallallahu in his statement, when he says that sometimes that the eyes, they tear, that they cry, but the heart is doesn't complain, the heart is content with whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives. So then when we get to the third level, which is rida, and that's the topic of today, contentment. This is the highest level because it doesn't just mean that when something comes to me, I am patient. It's a higher level because I am not only just patient, I am actually pleased. What that means is that it's contentment with the with the with the decision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one of the examples I can give you for that is if you think about uh, imagine that there's a person in your life that uh, think about a person in your life who you love the most of anyone else I, you know this person is so special to you now when that person comes and gives you anything it becomes something you love why because it came from the person you love and it doesn't actually really matter what that thing is the 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 quality or the the item the object itself is irrelevant what really all that really matters is the one the giver the one who gave it to you and because you love the giver so much you love whatever they give you it could be the most worthless thing or it could be the most valuable thing but to you it's it's always precious and you always love it because of who it came from now think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now relate this to Allah Rida is that state where you, because of your love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, anything that comes from Him you love. Anything that He gives you, you're, you are pleased with. It's a gift. It's from, because you love the giver, you love the gift. No matter what form the gift is. 
even if the gift, even if what he gives you is in the form of loss, even if what he gives you is in the form of withholding, even if what he gives you might might be painful, but because it comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first, you know that it's good for you. You know that Allah never gives something bad. You know, you go back to the example of the one you love, you know they're never going to give you something poisonous. Like they, they give you a box of chocolate, you're never going to think there's something like that's going to harm you in it. They, you know, because you love this person, you know this person, you trust this person, trust. You know they would never do something to hurt you. They would never give you a, a present that would hurt you. Now this is Allah. So we're talking in this example about a human being. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is higher than any analogy. Now with Allah, how you know, like you think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you really know and love Allah and you trust Him, and you know, you know, it's it's kind of also the idea of knowing his qualifications. You know, like when you go to a doctor or a dentist and they're doing a bunch of stuff on you that you have no idea what they're doing you don't understand the procedure like surgery this is one of the times when you have to basically just trust the surgeon and you're giving you're basically putting yourself under the knife right and you're and you're why are you doing that the reason you're doing that is because you trust the surgeon you you trust that the surgeon knows what he's doing and the reason you do that is because you know he has certain qualifications and he knows what he's doing but you don't understand everything he's doing does anybody who does everyone who goes and gets open heart surgery understand the whole procedure no they don't but they trust the surgeon so they trust the procedure and afterwards what are they going to do they're going to thank them and they're, you know what, after they've done, they've cut them open, and they've done this whole procedure, what does the person, what does the patient do? Says thank you. They're actually grateful to the surgeon, even though they're in a lot of pain, and they're on a lot of pain, you know, they have to take a lot of pain medication, but they're, they're in a lot of pain. They had no idea really what was going on, but they still say thank you. And they still feel that this doctor cured them. Why? Why? Because they know, I mean, they have trust. They know, first of all, that the, they have trust in the surgeon. And second of all, they know that the surgeon knows what he's doing. You go to someone you trust. You go, you see their credentials. They went to school. They went to this med school. Then they had this specialization. Oh, no, I trust this person. So even though you're in pain, even though you're in pain, you thank the surgeon. And you say, the surgeon saved my life. Now think about this. This is a this is just a flawed human being and we can have this response and we can have this trust. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts us into something, do we not have even and we don't even have this much trust for him. Even though he's Allah, there's no comparison between the surgeon and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his qualifications and in his ability and in in his love and in his mercy. Like you can think that the doctor has your best interest in mind, but maybe he just wants to get paid, right? Maybe he just gets a lot of money for the surgery. Doesn't that happen? Yeah, but we still trust them. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this isn't the case. Like, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really actually has our best interest in mind. He doesn't get any payment from whatever happens to us or doesn't happen to us. He doesn't get pay payment. So why is he doing it? We have to think about this. When something is happening to us and it hurts, why is it why is it happening? Why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala subject us to this? He doesn't he only wants good for us. So having that understanding and that trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then whatever comes to you, even if it hurts, not only do you say, I'm just gonna be patient. You know, it's like it's like this patient in this in this case with a doctor. One of them is just like really angry that they just got this surgery and they're really angry at the doctor but they still say thank you with like you know through their teeth like okay thank you you know they're just they're, but they're really mad it's kind of like a little kid like who gets a, a shot or something they don't really understand because the shot hurts you know vaccines a vaccine you know if you go inside inside the mind of a child when he goes into the doctor and you can kind of see the different levels of that i'm just talking about right now in this example because the child you know, you can think about, actually this happened, that, you know, you have like, think about uh, different different children different children at different ages. You have a two-year-old go in to get a shot. That two-year-old wants to like punch the doctor. Has no idea what is happening. All the two-year-old sees is that this person hurt me. This person subjected me to pain. 
That's all the two-year-old sees. That's that's the two-year-old's level of understanding. And then there's a higher level of understanding once the, once the child gets older. So, so now you're talking about maybe a 10-year-old. 10-year-old goes in to get the vaccine shot. Now the 10-year-old has a little higher understanding. This, I would say, maybe is like sabr. Because now the 10-year-old isn't so happy about the fact that it hurt, but can still understand sort of that you know that, that this was for their own good and they can still sort of say thank you even though inside they're really mad at the doctor and they hate the doctor. And then you have an adult who goes into a doctor and the doctor you know, puts the, va it puts the vaccine in them or gives them a shot that's actually curing them. The, the, the adult has full understanding of what's happening. So now this adult, even though they're feeling the same pain that the two-year-old did, the same pain that the ten-year-old did, this person is actually with all their heart grateful to the doctor. It isn't just a fake thank you, but it's, it's actually they're pleased with the doctor because the doctor has just cured them. That's like rida. Whenever, whatever is happening, it's not just like I see it as, okay, I just have to be patient and brace myself. And that's khair, and that's still, the, that's still good, that's still okay, that level of sabr. But this is the level where you can see everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you as good for you. And it's actually curing you, and it's actually freeing you, and it's actually making you better. It's actually like that surgeon, right? Like that, like that vaccine that's actually healing you. You were sick, and it's making you better. It's actually saving your life. And that's the way you see it. So that response is very different. In that response, you feel a sense of contentment. You feel a sense of, like, actually you're pleased with the doctor. Now, this level of response to calamity or hardship doesn't only remove the sins, as sabr does. This level actually elevates you in status with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we said that there were the three levels. And the highest level of rida is the one that actually is elevating the person in their station with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not only removing sins. The servant may experience one of two states as regard what he dislikes, the state of being content or that of being patient. And being content, we said, is the praiseworthy quality while believing patience while being patient is a duty which the believer must fulfill. So what what what's being said here is that sabr is the minimum, meaning it's, you know, in the example I gave, that, that if you internally, you're still kind of mad at the doctor, or you're still kind of, um, you still feel like sad about what happened, or you still feel like you see it as the 10-year-old did, that this is the minimum that a believer should have as a response. That, of course, we don't, we, oh, we, we don't complain, we don't, we're not angry with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because if we do have that response, then whatever is coming to us, is not fulfilling its purpose and in fact it's it, it becomes bad for us it becomes harmful to us because now it's actually uh we're, it's 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 hurting our situation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of our negative response so the minimum that a believer is asked is sabr and that rida is the higher level that we want to strive for at some times the people of contentment witness the wisdom and beauty of the one who tests when he tests his servants and they see that he is always right in whatever he decrees. So again here this is pointing to the fact that the, the person who has rida is the one who can see that everything Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives is, is for their own good, is good for them and it is with wisdom. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has full wisdom. He's al-Hakim. One of his attributes is that he is the most wise. At other times they witness the might and majesty and perfection of the one who tests. To such an extent they become completely immersed in these attributes of Allah so that they do not experience any pain. So what what's happened? Okay, what, what the scholar is referring to here is that... You can be subjected with some, and now we're talking now about the higher level of rida, right? So in within this level, you can be subjected to a hardship where you you see the hardship, and you're you know you see it, and you're kind of still focused on the hardship itself, but you're able to see the hardship as good for you, so you have contentment. 
Then there's another level where you actually aren't even seeing the hardship anymore. You're only seeing Allah. Your focus isn't actually on the hardship anymore. It's all on Allah and on His attributes. And so much so that you don't actually experience the pain of the hardship. Does that make sense? This station can only be attained by those who have great knowledge and love. And so it is possible that they find pleasure in whatever they have been afflicted with. Because it has come to them from their beloved. And this is just like, you know, the example I gave you of the gift. Because of who it came from, you love it, no matter what it is. Now he's going to go into more detail about the difference between contentment and patience. Um, being patient involves restraining the self and preventing it from giving in to resentment in spite of any suffering that it experiences in the hope that the misfortune which afflicts it will come to an end as well as restraining the limbs from behaving badly out of impatience. So in the state of sabr that we said, the middle stage, the 10-year-old the response, is that the person, you know, is... Uh, restraining themselves, they're restraining themselves from complaint, from resentment, restraining the internal state from that, and also restraining the body from from acts which are uh, prohibited, like like you know certain things that people will do when when some some die, you know, like um, back home they actually, you know, sometimes I've heard of people actually hiring. Uh, mourning women to mourn for the dead which means that they're like screaming and slapping their face and stuff like that it's 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 uh, it's it's something which the prophet sallam has specifically forbidden it, that's a that's a reaction which you would need to restrain in if you're you know as part of sabr is the reaction of the limbs as well as the internal state okay and it's it's you know it, when you just become overwhelmed with emotion and you just um, you know some people like rip their clothes or, or slap their face and and wail and stuff like that uh, um, being content so it, also in this case in the case of sabr you're 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 restraining the self internally and externally and you're waiting the whole time for it just to be over you see that you're waiting for it to be over uh, because it's you know it's not like something that you're enjoying you're just like but you're trying to be in control like in, of yourself that's sabr and, and that's very much, you know, uh, rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Being content, on the other hand, involves feeling at ease in accepting the divine decree and being unconcerned with when any suffering will stop, even though it is being experienced. In this case, the, 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 the case of Rida is when you... Um, remember we said that, you know, that, that the person is not focused on the the pain itself is not focused on the affliction itself but is focused on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what and his relationship with Allah so they don't actually feel they're not concerned about when is this thing going to go when it, you know it's like somebody's just like waiting waiting for it but that means it's like it, it's kind of like it's kind of like if you're waiting for something to happen and you're just sitting and looking at the clock you're just going to sit there and count the seconds until it, you know, until it's like over or whatever. Um, versus you get distracted with something and you're not noticing the clock. So because you got distracted with something else, your focus was on something else. You, you're not like sitting and watching the clock waiting for the thing to be over. So this is the idea that, that when, when the distraction here or the focus here is on Allah, the, the, it's, not, it's not on when is this thing going ha- to be over. This is part of Rada. And, and part of that has to do with the, that the person is, is seeing that like the good that's out, coming out of this thing and they love the good that comes out of it more than the thing itself. Let me explain what I mean. For example... Let me give the example of money. Someone could have, you know, a million dollars, and they love to have a million dollars. It's 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 some it's a gift, and you like to have money. But then maybe Allah subhanahu wa taala takes away that money, and because that money was taken away, that person got closer to Allah. They became more dependent on Allah, whereas before maybe they were a little more dependent on their money. So that person in that situation, in the situation of Rida, they would see that they love, that they would depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than to be given the money back. Even though it was an affliction, 
The, mo the loss of the money was an affliction, but what they got in exchange was better than, than the gift itself. Than, than the money itself. So their focus is on this. I love, like, I love this thing more. So that's how come they can have rida. They can have contentment, not just sabr. You know, sabr would be like, okay, like, just it's okay. I just lost all my money, and you know, maybe I'll get it back, but I'm just gonna be patient. You know, or maybe I'll just, I'll get the money back in jannah. You know, it's like, yeah, it's like, <laughs> it's like the idea is that the still the focus is on the pain of losing the money, and but alhamdulillah, they're still being patient. But then another person, you know, would be where it's like, dude, like, who cares about the money? Look at what I got instead. I have now this totally different level of a relationship with Allah. And I am so much, I mean, it's like you, you found something better, so you forgot about that other thing. You know how, like, you're really hung up on a person and you never really get over them until you find someone else better? Yeah, so it's like you you were really hung up on this this thing, which was money. You were really hung up on it, and you couldn't really, like you were like in love with it. But you couldn't really get over that love until you found something better, someone better that you fell in love with. In this case, it's Allah. Like that, that, connect, that gift from Him, you found something better, so you forgot about that like other person or that other thing that you were in love with at one point or another. So that's how you can have, now you're just like, not only are you, you're not complaining, you're not just, pay, you're like grateful. You're actually grateful. This is, you know, you're actually pleased that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took away your money. Because you see that what you got in, in exchange was so much better. So being content, on the other hand, involves feeling at ease in accepting the divine decree and being unconcerned with when the suffer any suffering will stop, even though it is being experienced. Being content alleviates any suffering by reason of the heart's immersion in the spirit of uncertainty and knowledge. If the contentment increases in its intensity, then it removes the experiencing of any suffering altogether. And this is what we're talking about here, that when the contentment is is really like you're immersed in the contentment and 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 seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instead of the loss then you actually don't feel the loss it doesn't look like a loss anymore in this case of losing the money it doesn't look like a loss anymore because of what you got in exchange what you got it was so much better yeah you you found something better so now you don't care anymore it has been related on the authority of Anas ibn Malik that the Prophet sallallahu said, When Allah loves someone, then he tests him. As for whoever is content, Allah will be pleased with him. And as for whoever is discontented, Allah will be displeased with him. Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anh said, Allah the Almighty has in his justice and wisdom placed refreshment and joy in certainty and contentment and he has placed sadness and sorrow in doubt and discontentment. These emotions themselves, you know, the feeling of contentment and certainty, they feel good. It feels good to be content. It feels good to be certain. On the other hand, being like in doubt, it's really painful, right? When you're not sure about something, it's a very internally, like there's a lot of turmoil when you feel unsure. And so it, it, it itself doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good to be discontent. In fact, the, the greatest misery is when you're not content. You're not content with what you have. You're, this is the meaning of misery. Because you can have all of the material things in the world, but you're not content with them. So there's no pleasure in it. So it's like even within these states themselves is a punishment or a reward in and of themselves. That, that being content gives its own reward. That it feels good. And being discontent and ungrateful, has its, it, it, it carries its own punishment because it, it hurts. It doesn't feel good. Uh, in, it's, it's sort of also, uh, I'd see it as a, a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he's pushing us. You know, whatever makes us feel good, we want more of. And whatever makes us feel bad, we want less of. So the hope is that being discontent, how bad it makes us feel, will push us towards contentment. You see? And that's where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us. Because this is, a, this is a form of ibadah. And it's actually a sin to be discontent. 
So Allah is pushing us from the sin towards the ibadah, towards the worship. And these are, you know, all of these things, these are states of the heart. And these are, but these are still ibadah, states of the heart. You know, there's ibadah, there's worship, ibadah of the heart, internal, and then there's ibadah of the limbs. And, and so we have the ibadah of our, of our body, and then we have the ibadah of our hearts. And, the, and the, the worship of the heart, the act of ibadah of the heart, one of them is rida, is, is contentment, is patience. And, it is, and the opposite of those things are also a sin, are also something that we're going to be held accountable for. So these are also acts of ibadah, but they're internal state, the internal you know, um, acts of the limbs and the versus acts of the heart. So he, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he puts so many ways in which he pushes us towards his worship. And he pushes us away from his masaya, from his disobedience. Even in the fact that it, rida, like, like, like complaint itself, doubt itself doesn't feel good. It hurts. It, it's an internal state that you want to avoid. When commenting on the ayah, no misfortune happens without the permission of Allah, and as for whoever believes in Allah, He guides his heart, and Allah knows all things. Al-Qama Al said, This concerns the misfortune which afflicts the servant. He knows that it has come from Allah, and so he comes, in ter he comes to terms with it and feels content with it. So this ayah that I just quoted uh, is chapter 64, verse 11. And I'll repeat it again. The, the translation of which is, No misfortune happens without the permission of Allah. And as for whoever believes in Allah, He guides his heart. And Allah knows all things. Here the, the commentator on this was saying that, that this is talking about the one who responds to any misfortune with knowledge that this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so they feel content with it because they know it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whoever believes in Allah, he guides his heart. And and that guiding, and he will guide his heart towards being at peace with it and being content with it. As regards to the ayah, what's translated as, whoever acts righteously, whether male or female, and is a believer, we will surely give him life with we will surely give him life with a good life and we will surely give him their reward in accordance with the best of what they used to do and about this ayah and this is chapter 16 verse 97 about this ayah al al aswar said a good life means being satisfied and content So here the ayah is saying that whoever acts righteously, whether a male or a female, and is a believer, we will surely give him a life with a good life. Then he describes that whoever had, whoever acts good, whoever acts righteously and is a believer, that what what they will be given as a gift is this contentment. That this good life that's being described in this ayah is the life of contentment, of having rida and contentment and being pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anh once said that Uday ibn Hatim looked sorrowful and so he asked him, why are you so sad? O, o Ad, Aday. Aday replied, how can I not be in a state in such a state when both of my sons have been killed and my eye gouged out. So Ali said to him, O Adi, whoever is content with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will surely experience it and be rewarded for it. And whosoever is not content with the decree of Allah will surely experience it and Allah will make his actions worthless. So what is Ali Radilan saying here? He's saying that there's two things that will happen if you're content and two things that will happen if you're not content. If you're content, the two things that happen, one is that you will experience that contentment. Experience it is talking about that feeling of being happy internally, of having that lightheartedness, that it actually, it's not just an action of the heart, but it's a pleasurable action of the heart because it makes you feel good that you feel happier because you're content. And the second part is Allah will reward you for it. So the reward comes in, in more than one way. The reward comes in that it actually feels good. You know, sometimes you might do an act of ibadah and it doesn't feel good, but you still do it. It's, it's hard for you to do maybe, but you still do it. Maybe it's really hard for you to give charity, 
but you just force yourself to do it. You come out, you know, you, 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 you close down on your nafs and you do it and you give. Are you, are you going to be rewarded? Yeah, you're still going to be rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you did it, even though it was hard for you. But with con in this case, there are some things that it feels good to do and you're rewarded for it. So you're rewarded like twice. You're rewarded in that it, it, you enjoy it. It's good for you. It feels good and you're rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in addition to that reward. You know, it's kind of like fasting. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, tells us that for the fasting person, there's two pleasures. It's like that. There's two pleasures for the fasting person. What is the two pleasures? When he breaks his fast in the end of the day at Maghrib, he has his first pleasure. Because you know when you're fasting all day and you're hungry and you get to eat? So then that's like your first pleasure. You get to eat. You're hungry. You're a hungry person who gets to eat. And his second is when he meets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward that person. So the reward is, is twice. It's here and there. And so contentment is one of those things. On the other hand, not being content has a double punishment. Has a double punishment. The, the first punishment is that you feel miserable when you're not content. It doesn't feel good. It, it hurts internally. And the second punishment is that it's, it's a sin itself. So you will be punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you will feel the pain of it and you will be punished for it unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives. So there's that double punishment. And I really, I mean, do you guys see how Allah, He, he puts, it's like he, he puts so many mark, so many signs, so many things to push us towards Him, towards His ibadah, towards His tawheed. Like, even the, the fact is that he doesn't want us to be discontent, it's a sin. So what does he do? He puts in it pain. You see what I mean? You, so you don't actually want to be discontent, even if you're not a Muslim. Even if you don't even believe in Allah, they tell you, they teach you in these like support groups, right, to be content. Why? Because it just, it doesn't feel good otherwise. See, so even if they're not doing it for Allah, even if they're not doing it as an act of worship, human beings, they will gravitate towards what feels good. And Allah has made it so that whatever is, is, is in line with what He wants feels good. Because He designed us. And whatever is not in line with what He wants, it doesn't feel good. So even the one who doesn't know Allah will gravitate towards contentment if they want to like cope. And they want to feel good. They want to get over something. That's what that's what they'll teach them to in in a support group. And then his actions will be worthless. And this is I mean this is the thing is that the, the action itself you know are you you don't get the reward. You know, Allah subhanahu wa taala is sending you this thing this hardship, and it's intended for good for you. You know, it's kind of like going back to the example of the um, the surgery or the vaccine. It's kind of like you know, you went through that pain, and then when you get home, you like you like you don't you rip you rip off the the stitches or something, or you you just you 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 don't take care of the wound so it gets infected. The, the idea here is that you didn't even get the the benefit of of why that happened to you. And, and or with the vaccine, you know, it's like it's like a person who gets, you know, put the needle gets put in. They felt the prick, but then they pull it out before the vaccine can even go into their body. So then it's like they felt the pain, and they didn't even get the benefit of it. They didn't. They didn't. It didn't fulfill its purpose because of your response. You're not even letting the cure cure you. You're not even letting the treatment take, you know, do its work because you're not being patient. You're not letting it do its work. If you're patient and you're content, then you'll see that it will do its work. It will cure you. If you had, you have a lot, we all have all this like sickness inside of us, all this, all these diseases inside of us. If we're patient, it'll do its work. It'll, it'll, it'll clean us. Let it clean you. Realize that we are all in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he's, He cures us. He sends things to cure us and then to elevate us. But we have to let let it do its work. We have to let Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do His work.
Abu Darda visited a man on his deathbed and found him praising Allah. So he said to him, You are right. Allah Azza wa Jal likes us to be content with whatever he decrees. Hassan al Hassan al Basari said, Whoever is content with what he has, Allah will make it enough for him and give it blessing. And whoever is not content, Allah will neither make it enough for him nor give it blessing. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz said, I have nothing that gives me any joy except when what has been decreed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala happens. You know that feeling? Um, it's like it's like it's like something happening and then you're told this this or or basically getting um it's kinda like getting a package in the mail and then you look on the card and you see who it's from. And if you see, when you open the card and you see who it's from, and it's from this, the person that you love most in the world, like someone you're just like obsessed with, yeah? And it, the package is from that person. Like how you feel, like like you feel like, just how do you feel, you know? Whatever in the, whatever's in the package is irrelevant. It doesn't matter. You just feel like, oh, like this is from that person. So you just love it. You feel so much ease. And this is what Hassan al-Basri is talking about. That no, sorry, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz is talking about. He's saying, I have nothing that gives me any joy except when what has been decreed by Allah happens. And he knows that this thing that happened, this package that came, is from Allah. And the joy he feels from that, knowing that this is from my beloved, like this is from Allah. So he feels joy in just knowing that, that what Allah wanted has happened. Whatever Allah wanted has happened. So you feel happy about that. And you feel, you feel, like you love that thing just because it was what Allah wanted and you know for a fact again that not only was it good for you it was good for the one who it happened to it was it was good for everyone involved because of who did it come from it came from Allah he was once asked Omar ibn Abdul Aziz was once asked what do you desire and he replied whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees this is rida this is this is rida to to want what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. Like that's like the ultimate level, right? Because you know that's all we ask for. That's really at the root of it what we really want is to want what Allah wants. Because if you want what Allah wants, what are you wanting? You're wanting what's best. Can ever Allah want something that's not best? Can ever Allah decree something that's not best? But the the idea is just in, in us. We struggle we struggle with, with, we don't always want what's best. We don't always get attached to what's best. We sometimes get attached to what's worst. We sometimes get attached to what will hurt us. We sometimes want what's going to hurt us. This is the, the human being. We're, we're very foolish. We're very impatient. We're very weak. We're very weak. And this is how we are created in this state of just so much weakness. But if we could just ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us attach ourselves to only what He decrees and only what He wants and to be at, at such a state where you want what Allah wants and there's this dua such a beautiful dua it says Allahumma inni urid an la urid illa ma turid Allahumma inni urid O oh Allah I want an la urid that I don't want illa ma turid except what you want Oh Allah, I want that I don't want except what you want. And this is this is all we want. <laughs> right? We want to want what Allah wants and nothing else. Because it's anything other than guys think about it. Anything other than what Allah wants is just poison. It's just hurtful. It's just bad for us. Why would we want it? We never stop and think that. We just get attached blindly to things and we never stop to think that what we're attached to is actually cutting us, is actually hurting us, is actually killing us. Abdul Wahid ibn Zayd said, Being content is the greatest door to Allah, the garden of this life, and the place of rest for the worshippers. That if you want to to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there's a lot of different doors that you can reach Allah and what's the point here is that one of the greatest and fastest doors to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is through the door of rida the door of contentment 
This means that whatever comes your way, you feel pleased with it. And you feel like you know that it's best for you. And you see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than you see the thing that has come or the thing that was lost. You see Allah. That this is one of the best doors and the fastest doors to enter and to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It has also been said, there will be no station in the akhirah better than of those who are content with whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees at all times. Whoever enjoys the quality of contentment will be raised to the best of stations. On discovering one morning that he had lost a great many camels, an Arab of the desert said, By him of whom I am one of his slaves, were it not for some envious and malicious enemies, I would not have been pleased to see my camels still alive and in their pen, and something which Allah, and something which Allah has decreed not taking place. So because he had even though he had lost, and at this point, you know, we, we don't really understand, we don't relate to the loss of camels, yeah? We, we would relate maybe to the loss of like 10 Mercedes, right? Um, so if this dude has a lot of camels and they're lost, uh, it's, it's, it's a big deal in that time, not for us. But for us, it'd be like losing very, very expensive cars, for example. So he loses them. I mean, it's kind of, this is kind of like equivalent, this actually happened, but um, equivalent to someone who owns like a car dealership, and this this is actually I, I heard in one of uh, the lectures that there was a, a a guy who had a car dealership and I think it was like a hurricane one of the hurricanes destroyed it yeah so he I mean he really lost a lot that's a lot yeah luxury cars and they were all destroyed and actually you know it was, t um, was in a, one of the lectures of Noman Ali Khan he said that the the way that the person responded you know was with it was with contentment it was it was like you know because the idea here is that you know when the gift is in your heart versus in your hand and so his he had all this all this wealth or he had all these cars just like this guy had all these camels but he loved something more and you know in this case this man he loved uh, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed more than he loved his camels so he was content so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us with contentment with sabr and, and at the higher level rida and to make it easy for us aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfir Allah li wa lakum innahu ghafurur rahim subhanakallahu wa bihamdik nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaik wal 'asr inna al insana lafi khusr illa alladhina amanu wa 'amilus salihati wa tawasaw bil haqqi wa tawasaw bis sabr